Greetings everyone, this is Non Expert here back again with another video. Today we'll be solving problem number 13 and the difficulty has been rated at is hard. Uh, okay, so this problem was asked by Amazon. Again, I would like to emphasize this fact that do not really get intimidated by the difficulty. Most of the problems which we are solving, we are using an approach which is pretty easy to use, right? Um, and that's the like, that's the mindset that I want you guys to take in the interview as well. All right, cool. Let's just get down to the question. Okay, so the problem description is given an integer k and a string s. Find the length of the longest substring that contains at most k distant characters. For example, given s which is equal to a b c b a and k equal to two. The longest substring with k distant characters is bcb. Uh, it's it's a pretty easy problem to understand. If you didn't understand it, I'll explain it one more time. If you're given a string and all you want to do is find the longest contiguous uh, continuous substring, right, which has k distant characters or at most k distant characters. So if k is equal to two, that means that the number of unique that you can use that you can build out with the substring is two, and the longest substring that we can build out with that over here is B C B. All right, cool. Um, so today we'll not be using lead code or even hacker rank. Today we'll be using a different platform altogether, and the name of the platform is Lint Code. If you don't know what Lint Code is, um, uh, it's Pretty easy to understand. It's just like lead code, but has a lot more questions, uh, and all of it is free for you to use. So yeah, you can find the link for the lint code problem in the description below. Um, so let's just get down to the question, right? So this is the lint code problem. Let's just hide the editor. Uh, let's just look at the description ones. So the description is pretty similar, uh, as you can see. This is exactly the same, and they've given a few more examples as well. So you can look at this example where E C E B A is given as a string and k is equal to three. That means that the number of distinct characters that we can use is three, and the maximum uh, substring that we can form with that is the thing which I've highlighted right now. Therefore, the output needs to be equal to four. Uh, Explanation is given here. Um, cool. So, and the challenge over here is to try to solve it in O of n time. Um, that's a little bit a little bit tricky actually, to be honest, but uh, we'll try to solving it in a normal scenario. Uh, we'll not look at the main <clears throat> challenge as such because that wasn't given in the daily coding problem and it's not really that relevant to us. Uh, but we'll still, still try to solve it in that, in the most optimal way possible, right? Cool. So let me just explain the way we're going to approach this problem. So if you do not know what this problem, I mean, which domain does this problem rely under, it's basically going to use something called as a two-pointer approach or a sliding window approach. If you don't know what a sliding window is, you can Google it. It's as it's denoted, it's a sliding window. Um, basically what you do is, you take a window and you try to slide it as much as you can. And the way you try to solve, uh, slide it is basically by using two pointers, by using two indexes, right? Um, cool. So let's just take a quick example for me to help you understand how we would be using this. So let's let's just take um, this guy here, right? Where k is equal to three. So let's just write that k is equal to three, and the string which has been given to us is e, c, e, b, e, and a. Okay, so the way the sliding window works is basically you want to select a particular window, right? And you want to slide through it while understanding what's going to be the maximum length that we've encountered for the k distant characters, right? Uh, another representation would be through a dry run. So let's just say that you have two variables. Let's call them left. Um, let's call them, actually, let's not call them left. Let's just call them i, j, and max. So Max is something that we, we are going to use for just denoting what's the max length that we've encountered so far. So we'll just write it here. So max would be equal to zero, right? And we're going to also maintain something which is going to be a dictionary type of representation. So our dict is basically 
uh, or a hash map or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's basically going to contain the character value as the key value and the value as the number of times you've encountered that value, right? Uh, and the reason why I'm maintaining that, I'll get to it. Um, actually, I'll get to it right now. The reason why I'm maintaining that is because in Python, there's this awesome way for you to understand what's the length of the object itself. And the way you sort of represent that is just by saying len, right? And it will return you the number of number of key value pairs that you have inside your dictionary or your object or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, and the way we can use this is actually just by, you know, appending the values inside our dict. And while we're doing that, we can also, but when we're doing that, we can actually maintain what are the number of unique elements that we have inside our dict. Okay, so let's get down to a quick dry run because um, explaining it would just make it a little bit trickier for you to understand. Um, but let's start with it. So basically, you would start with i and j. So um, <clears throat> the way you're going to iterate with j is basically every single time you are conforming to the rule. And the rule is that the dictionary should have at least or at most, rather, at most k elements, right? So if the length of the dict exceeds this guy, we need to do something about it, right? And that's going to be a second rule. So our second rule is going to be when that happens, we are going to, instead of updating the jth element, we'll be updating the ith element. And while we're doing that, you would see that we are actually using a sliding window. All right, cool, let's get down to it. So let's do a quick dry run. So I've just written i and j over here, but i and j would actually be starting from the first element. Um, actually, let's just denote that, that will be easier. So let's say i and j is over here, right? Um, and at that point of time, what you want to say is, we're going to use an iteration for j, and we're going to make it iterate to the end of the end of the string, right? So over here, our dictionary would get updated and our value is not going to be zero it's going to be one right so it's been so the number of times we've encountered e so far is one then uh, is it conforming to our rule yes it is conforming to our rule as the length of dict is less than k so actually let's just write our rule over here our rule is the length of dict should always be less than k is it following a rule? Yes, it is. Therefore, we would update our j. So our j right now is at one, uh, which is the character c. So we'll just go ahead and print it. Uh, and as you can see here, the length of the dict is still, <clears throat> is still two, which is less than three. So we're good so far, right? Now, what we'll do is we'll increment j again, since you know, we've not broken any rules as such. Uh, and the value of e would now become two because we've encountered two so far, right? So as you can see here, number of times e comes in this substring is two and c comes once. Cool, length is still the same. And while we're doing that, we need to keep on updating our max as well. So max is basically going to be equal to three. And the calculation that we're going to be using is g minus i plus one. So you can see that over here. Um, j is 2, i is 0, max length needs to be 3, so the computation is j minus i plus 1. Cool, uh, no rules broken so far, so we'll keep on incrementing, we'll come to j, uh, and j is now equal to 3, uh, so which is at this particular character, therefore we can see that b needs to be updated. So B is here, uh, and the rule has still not been broken because the length of the dict at most would needs to be equal to K, so it's actually less than equal to K. So no rules broken so far, and the value of max is now four. So when we go to J now, uh, that the rule has actually been broken. So you can see A is now one. And the length of the dictionary is four, right? Which cannot happen. So when that happens, what we need to do is we need to up start updating i. So while we're updating i, sorry, while we're updating i, uh, we need to make sure that 
during that entire process of updating i um what's happening is is that oops i'm so sorry let me just yeah so what's happening at that particular moment of time is that we are no longer considering this particular e so we would need to decrement that value from our dict as well so this will no longer be e2 it will be e1 so as you can see here the number of characters that you have in c is one e is once b is once a is once right uh, and the max will get updated again but it's already four so no update required as such uh, and, and yeah you can go ahead with the iteration over and over again um, if you want but basically what's going to happen over here is that your rule is still not being followed right max is not going to get updated the rule is not being followed because length of the dict is actually greater than k it's four whereas k is three right so you will increment i to this guy here i'm so sorry about the misrepresentation um yeah so we are going to come over here and we're going to pop out c from our dictionary so now the length is three but the value is not greater than the max which is already stored inside so we've come up with the algorithm so let's quickly just code it out right uh, we'll keep these comments in place so that's easier for us to understand um, so what we're going to use is we're going to go to the collections module first and we're going to import something called as a counter uh, and the reason i'm using a counter is basically that i don't want to deal with um, key errors and the way a counter works in, uh, in, in python is basically it's a dictionary right it's this guy here it's a dictionary uh, but when you try to reference to a key which does not exist inside that inside that uh, counter variable right if it does not exist over there all it does is assigns a value of zero to it right so if i to counter key equal to one it will basically make a key for me and it will assign it a value of one again if you don't know what it is it's pretty simplistic um, you can google it but we'll move on with that right all you need to make sure is that this is just going to always contain values of zero if it's not being referenced all right cool so let's maintain i and j uh, but our i was basically the left value and j was the right value um and the way we're going to sort of do this is basically we're going to call it left it's easier for us to understand what the left is uh, and we're just going to assign a value to max length and left right pretty simply so far now what we're going to do is we're going to just iterate our string so we're going to use enumerate because we need both the index as well as the character itself okay uh, but while you're doing that we also need to make sure uh, that the right that we're using right now is the j is the same thing as the j value. you can use j but i'm just using right it's easier for me to understand oh uh, okay cool now the first thing that we want to do is we want to update the value inside our counter variable our dictionary variable right so all i have to do is i just have to say plus equal to one and when i do this it's just going to you know append if the if the key does not exist it's going to take it as zero and then it's going to add it with one and then this key would actually exist inside our dictionary right um, also what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a quick while loop and the while loop basically is going to check our rule so our rule stated that the counter the length of the counter needs to be less than or equal to k so we're going to run a while loop when it's greater than k right and when it's greater than k it's the condition which we had seen where where i was over here uh, and we had too many elements inside the dictionary so as we as we had talked about before what we would do in that scenario is that we would decrement the value inside our counter right or dictionary so if when e was equal to 2 we decremented to e1 because that thing no longer comes under the substring that we built out right so let's do that real quick let's just say counter s left right basically subtracted with one whoops and we subtracted with one now okay something happened okay so we subtracted with one and we need to do a quick check as well that if counter of sorry if counter of s left the value of it is equal to zero 
if it's actually equal to zero, we no longer require it. Required, so we can just you know, remove it from our <clears throat> counter variable. Uh, so we just delete it out, so it's no longer present over there. This is just so that you know we don't have any any values which are just equal to zero, but they're still residing inside our counter. So if you do this, you know our counter just has values which are greater than uh, greater than or equal to one, right? If you do this particular thing, which we actually need. So we're doing that. Um, and now all we have to do is we just have to keep on incrementing the left value as much as we can. All right, cool. And when all of this is done, we need to you know just update our max length every single time we're coming to our max. So let's just do that real quick. Um, and the value of max is going to be the formulation that we've written j minus i plus one. You know, using the j is basically right. I is left plus one and all you have to do is just return this max length because that's the answer that we have seems pretty easy all right cool uh, i think we're done with this particular solution let's just try running it once seems to be running pretty well uh, let's try summating it Awesome, and it does work perfectly. Um, before we sort of move forward, uh, before we end this video, let's just do a quick print so that we understand that you know everything is working as per our understanding. So let's do car uh, counter. Let's do um, left first and right. And what's the max length that we've encountered so far? Let's just put this off to the max length. Cool. I think we have. We shouldn't have any indentation errors. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's just run this once. And it's going to be running on ECBA. And cool. So you can see how it's sort of working out. So you traverse E first, you know, our left and our right are correct over here. Our max length has been updated to one. Merge encounters C. We have this particular variable, which is, which is fine. The counter is correct. Max length is also correct. Uh, when we encounter another e, e is getting incremented to a counter, uh, right is getting updated, obviously, because it's the enumerate and the max length has been updated. And when we encounter b, b gets appended as well, because it's still conforming to a length of 3, and you have 0, 3, and 4, which is awesome. <clears throat> and then what's happening here is, is that we've sort of not written a print on the while loop, but the next consideration that we've taken is eba. Uh, reason I've done that is basically these two are skipped now um, because they are still they were still leading our counter to have a length which was greater than um, three, right? Uh, and when that thing got handled, we were left with these guys here, and we have the answer as four. Cool. Um, so that's it for this video. It's a pretty long video because I was sort of trying to explain how sliding window would work, but I hope that uh, my explanation was clear. If it was not clear and if you want me to explain something else, please do let me know in the comments below. Um, again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, do give a like and do subscribe to this video. It really does help a lot. And if you want me to cover a particular topic, do let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And again, if you've already subscribed, you're awesome. We all know it. Have a great day and goodbye.